Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1980 Detroit Tigers season replay. Today's matchup is between the Chicago White Sox and the Detroit Tigers at Tiger Stadium. On the mound for the White Sox is Ross Baumgarten, whose record is 12-10 with a 4.87 ERA. And pitching today for the Tigers is Rick Russell, whose record is 9-17 with a 4.80 ERA. And so, if you take a look here, you'll see we won the last two games against the Angels, scoring 20 runs in total. Uh, in yesterday's game, we put up some decent runs, but had to hold off the Angels with our terrible, terrible bullpen. Um, Gary Hancock hit his 19th home run, and that was against a lefty, which was amazing, his first extra base hit. And... Uh, Jim Bibby, he hit his 16th, uh, he hit his 16th, he had, got his 16th win, and that uh, ties him for the league lead. So, not a bad overall la final two games of that Angels series. And we did pull one game closer to the Yankees. Uh, we're back by four and a half games now, uh, which is the same as the Angels are ahead of the Rangers. So, we're playing the White Sox now. They're six games back. And uh, we're at home, which we really need to be. The other good news is we got Pat Underwood back today. And so uh, he is a sorely needed lefty uh, middle reliever for us. Um, he is easily one of the best pitchers we have. I sent uh, Dave Rucker back down to the minor leagues. He did not get an out in his previous appearance. And uh, with two days before the... Uh, September call-up date. Uh, we're just going to go with what we have here, and then uh, we'll have some extra bullpen arms to work with uh, when we flip over to September. So uh, Dave Tobik will not be available today, and that's just fine by me. And uh, we're going against the lefty, Ross Baumgarten, and uh, we have five offensive hitters here, five players who uh, are all listed as tired. So, uh, as I said before, I'm just going to keep going with the, the best lineup I can put out there. I did give Hebner the day off, and I did give uh, Gary Hancock the day off, because he, he doesn't hit lefties very well. And so, hopefully, uh, we'll have enough uh, right-handers in here to take care of Ross Baumgarten. Let's go ahead and do the White Sox lineup. And over here on the right side, you'll see the 1980 Topps card that best represents that player. So leading off and playing third base today for the Sox is Joe Gates. Batting second and at first base is Mike Squires. Batting third and in center field, Chet Lemon. Batting cleanup and catching is Marv Foley. Batting fifth and in left field is Ron Pruitt. Batting sixth and in right field is Rusty Coots. Batting seventh and DHing is Henry Cruz. Batting eighth and at second base is Jerry Hairston. And batting ninth and playing shortstop is Greg Pryor. Uh, that is their everyday lineup. We've seen that lineup several times this year. And uh, pitching for the Tigers is uh, Rick Russell. Uh, Russell has uh, lost uh, his last three decisions. And uh, he's 5-8 and eight as a Tigers pitcher. And 9-17 and 17 overall. Uh, he's pitched pretty decently. Uh, his ERA is at 430 ERA. 60 Ks and 104 innings pitch, which is pretty good, uh, you know, for this era. Opponents are batting 288 against him, and he's got a couple complete games. So hopefully he can get his 10th win and not his 18th loss today. Joe Gates leads off the top of the first, and there's a base hit to left field. And Joe Gates has 38 stolen bases. He's among the league leaders, so uh, we need to keep an eye on him. Got Parrish behind the plate today. And Squires grounds it to short. And the only play is to first base. 
as uh, Gates is safe at second. So one down. Here's Chet Lemon. It's a strike to Lemon, but Gates steals third on Parrish. And uh, there is a runner at third now with less than two outs. And Lemon's going to get a base hit. Gates scores, and it's one to nothing, Sox. So one down, Chet Lemon at first base. Here's Mar Foley. Foley grounds it to short. Will that be two? Yep. That's the end of the first. So we head to the bottom of the first inning. Let's do the Tigers lineup rundown. Batting leadoff and playing second base is Sweet Lou Whitaker. Batting second and at shortstop is Alan Trammell. Batting third and DHing is Carlton Fisk. Batting cleanup and in left field is Steve Kemp. Batting fifth and catching is Lance Parrish. Batting sixth and at first base is Jason Thompson. Batting seventh and in center field is Tony Armis. Batting eighth and at third base today is Tom Brookins. And batting ninth and in right field is Bob Baylor. On the mound for the Sox is Ross Baumgarten. His 32nd start already with a whole month to go. So they're on a four-man rotation. Uh, it's a 12-10 record with a 4.87 ERA. He's got 103 Ks and uh, 205 innings pitch. So he's clearly not a strikeout pitcher. Opponents betting 255 against him. And uh, only one complete game. He's got 12 wild pitches. Uh, Baumgarten has one win in his last eight starts. So not so hot for Baumgarten. Let's see if we can put some runs on the board. As Whitaker leads off with a fly ball to center field. Lemon's got it for the first out. So one down. Here's Trammell. Trammell's going to get a base hit to left field. And that's Pruitt out there in left. Do we want to risk getting thrown out early? I'm going to say no, because uh, Fisk is a 361 batter against lefties. And he hits it right back to Baumgarten. And they get Trammell at second. So two down. Here's Steve Kemp. Fisk on first. And Kemp crushes it to right. That's gone. Two-run home run for Kemp. His 17th on the year. Two behind the team leader, Gary Hancock, who's off today. And Parrish hits it into right field. It gets down and gets to the wall. And Parrish has himself a double. So three hits for the Tigers. Here in the first. Two down for JT. And Thompson hits it on a line to center field. But it's caught by Lemon for the third out. So we take the 2-1 to one lead on the two-run shot by Kemp. Head to the top of the second. Here's Ron Pruitt. Pruitt strikes out looking. That's the first K for Russell. One down. Rusty Kuntz. He walks. So another runner on first. We're uh, concerned about the uh, White Sox running on us as Cruz grounds it to short. And they get uh, Kuntz at first, uh, second, I'm sorry. So Henry Cruz is on first, two down for Jerry Hairston. And there we go, Cruz steals second base. So runner in scoring position. We're going to bring the outfield in. And there's a base hit to center field. Armis has it, and the run scores from second base. And it's 2-2. Two to two. So an RBI single for Hairston. Greg Pryor's up next. Pryor gets a base hit to center field. So runners on first and second. Two down. Joe Gates is up. Started the game off with a base hit. Betting 317 versus righties. 
And he hits a fly ball to center field, and Armis has it for the third out. So the White Sox put a run on the board, tied up to two. We go to the bottom of the second. Here's Tony Armis leading off. Armis goes the other way for a base hit. So runner on first. Here's Tommy Brookins. Uh, hits lefties pretty well, but I'm almost thinking we should bunt. But you know what? It's early. Let's let Brookins swing away. And Brookins hits a fly ball into left center field. That's not going to get it done. So with one down, we're going to hit and run with Bob Baylor. His overall batting average down to 285 as he grounds it to short. Arm is safe at second. So runner in scoring position for Sweet Lou. He was 0 for 4 against Baumgarten so far this year. And Lou's going to get a base hit to center, and that will give us the lead 3 to 2. And we are definitely not going to run on Chet Lemon. But we are going to run on Marv Foley. We're going to try to steal second here with Whitaker. And, oh, come on. That was a low inside pitch. And Whitaker somehow gets thrown out at second base. So we head to the top of the third. 3-2. to two. So far, all about the offenses. As Squires leads off the top of the third, grounding to Trammell. One down. Next up, Chester Lemon. Oh, that's gone. Home run by Lemon to right field. His team-leading 19th home run. And the Sox have put a run on the board every inning so far. One down for Marv Foley, who pops it up. Whitaker has it for the second out. So two down for Pruitt. And Pruitt grounds it to Thompson, who steps on the bag for the third out. So we go to the bottom of the third. All offense so far as Trammell leads off the inning. And uh, it looked like ball four as Trammell pops it up to third. Joe Gates has it for the out. So one down. There's Pudge. Pudge hits a blooper into right center field. Caught by Lemon. Thought it might get down. So two down for Kemp who had that home run in the uh, first inning and he grounds up to short so the Tigers are the first team not to put a run on the board in an inning we go to the top of the fourth all tied at three Russell at 47 pitches Rusty Coots leading off Coots rips it to left caught on the run there by uh, the left fielder Kemp one down here's Henry Cruz Cruz grounds it to second. Whitaker has it for the second out. And here's Jerry Harrison. Harrison hits it to his counterpart at second. And that's the third out. So a 1 2 3 inning for Russell. Uh, he needed that. As we go to the bottom of the fourth, Parrish is first man up. He's 3 for 3 with a walk against Baumgarten this year. And there's his first out as he grounds it to second. Harrison has it. So one down for JT. Have dropped him down to the sixth spot. He doesn't hit lefty so well, but he does on that one as the wind must be blowing out today. Thompson gets his 17th home run. And that is the third home run of the game, and it's only the fourth inning. So four to three Detroit. Tony Armis is up. This guy does not have a home run as a Tiger. Although he was 8 for 16 with two home runs against Baumgarten before that at bat as he grounds, grounds it back to Ross for the second out. That brings up Brookins who walks and he has got a 94 speed. So we've got to take advantage of this situation. And he does steal second base on Foley. So Brookins in scoring position for Baylor who uh, is, is struggling. But he's good defensively. That's why we keep him around. He grounds it to second, and that's the end of the inning. So the Tigers take back the lead. Third time this game 
that they've done that. And it's 4-3, to three, top of the fifth. Number nine hitter Greg Pryor leading off. He's 3-for-3 three three against Russell. And Pryor pops it up into the outfield grass where Trammell snags it for the first out. One down for Joe Gates. Gates grounds it to first. And we keep Gates off the base, which is nice. So two down for Mike Squires. Squires grounds it to Whitaker. So maybe Russell's set settling in as we go to the bottom of the fifth. Sweet Lou leading off the inning. And he strikes out. That's only the first strikeout for Baumgarten. Tram's up next. Trammell grounds it to short. Thought it might get through. But Pryor has it for the second out. So two down for Carlton Fisk. And Fisk hits it to first, where Squires has it for the third out. So we go to the sixth. Let's pull up the uh, in-game stats. And uh, you can see how it's playing out. I don't know whose home run is more important. I guess at this point, uh, Thompson's, who's what, who hit his go-ahead home run. So uh, here's Chet Lemon leading off the inning. He's two for five overall. Two for two today with a home run. He grounds it to short. There's one down. Seven in a row for Russell, for what it's worth. Oh, why do I always do that? As Foley gets a base hit. Stretches it into a double. Runner on second for Ron Pruitt. Russell up to 80 pitches. Pruitt grounds it to Brookens at third. Foley holds as Pruitt's thrown out at first base. So two down. Here's Rusty Kuntz. I'm going to pull the outfield in. Just in case. As Kuntz grounds it to Brookens... And we get out of the inning. So we head to the bottom of the sixth. Four to three Detroit. Steve Kemp leading off the inning. Kemp grounds it to second. Harrison has it for the first out. Next up is big wheel Lance Parrish. And Parrish pops it straight up at the plate. And Foley's got it for the second out. Next up, JT. And Thompson, starting to really hit lefties now, gets a double into right center field. Seventh hit overall for Detroit. Tony Armis up next. And Tony Armis grounds it to short. And that's the end of the inning. So to the top of the seventh. And uh, I'm going to let, I mean, may as well just let Russell keep going here. As Henry Cruz leads off the inning by lining out to Kemp and left. One down. Here's Jerry Harrison, two for four against Russell. He's going to get an infield single. As Trammell cannot make the play. I'm going to pull third base in. Since uh, Pryor is an above average bunter. And Harrison's speed is not just slightly below average. Pryor grounds it to short. Will that be two? Yes, we get out of the inning. And that's going to be it for Baumgarten as they bring in Mike Prowley. This is his 40th game. He's 4-3 and three with a 4.03 ERA. 36 Ks and 60 innings pitch. Opponents are betting 286. He's got himself a save. So that's going to be it for Brookins. We're going to take him out. And we're going to bring in Hebner. To face the righty. And Hebner grounds it to short. There's one down. And we're going to take out Baylor. And we're bringing in Gary Hancock. Batting 323 versus righties. And that looks like a home run. Off the wall for a double. Just didn't have it enough. Uh, length there as it bounced off the wall. So one out runner on second base after the double by Hancock. 
And Whitaker grounds it up the middle. Shortstop Pryor has it as Hancock has to hold. So two down. Trammell with an opportunity here to drive in a run. And he grounds it right at the second baseman, Harrison. We go to the eighth. So we're back to the top of the lineup with a couple of lefties. And uh, Russell had his best performance in a while. And this is why we're happy to have Pat Underwood back. So we're going to bring him in to face Gates. Here in the top of the eighth. Tigers 4-3 to three lead. And there's a base hit to center field. And there's some speed on the base pass now. Squires is an excellent bunter for a first baseman. No power for this guy. Uh, so we're going to bring the corners in. Keep the middle of the infield back in case he tries to steal. And he's swinging away. Ground ball to short. And they have to go to first. Maybe uh, Gates was running on that play. So the tying run is at second base. We're going to intentionally walk Chester. And we're going to face Foley here, lefty on lefty. This will be the last batter for uh, Underwood. Let's try to turn two here. Wow. He walks the bases loaded. So, a uh, terrible job by Underwood. Um, we really, really needed him to come through. So, that means Roger Weaver steps in as uh, the next man up with uh, Tobik being uh, tired in the bullpen. So now we got to pull the infield in. This game is about to be blown open. I have a feeling. Ooh, Pruitt grounds it right to Trammell. And they get the lead run at home. So the force out at the plate. And that's going to leave it up to Rusty Kuntz. And um, we're just going to keep the defense straight away. As Kuntz grounds it to Thompson, and he steps on the bag, and the Tigers get out of a mess. As we head to the bottom of the eighth, up 4-2-3. Carlton Fisk leading off, and he strikes out as you might expect. He does not hit righties at all. I probably should have pinch hit him with uh, Champ Summers. Kep comes through with a base hit, though, with one down. A single for Kemp, and next up is Parrish. One for three on the day. And he hits a line drive right at Hairston. Two down. So that will leave it up to JT. Two for three today. He had that big bomb earlier, and he strikes out swinging. So to the top of the ninth, Tigers lead four to three. And uh, you can't trust either one of these guys. They're really sharing the closing duties depending on the lefty-righty matchups. Capizello's been putrid. But uh, we're going to let him face the lefty, Henry Cruz. And Cruz pops it up down the third baseline. Hebner has it for the first out. So Harrison's going to turn around and bat uh, right-handed as a switch hitter, where he's only batting 271. That's good enough for a base hit to left field. And uh, now we have the righty, Greg Pryor. We're going to leave Capizello to pitch to Pryor, because we do have two lefties after him. So this is going to maybe be a stolen base opportunity, maybe a bunt. We're going to bring the corners in, see what happens. Pryor hits a high fly ball to center field. It's caught by Armis for the second out. So one out away from getting uh, Russell his 10th win. Joe Gates stands in the way. And he hits a blooper into left center field. And it's caught by Kemp to end the game. So a much needed win. 4-3 for Detroit. A good homecoming. As uh, we take a look at the standings, we did not game a game, game, gain a game 
as uh, we stay four and a half games back. Uh, Texas does close the gap, though. They're three and a half back. So let's take a look at the transactions. Nothing of note there. Let's take a look at the box score. We'll get out of here. One more game, and then uh, September call-ups come up. You're going to see Kirk Gibson. You're going to see Dan Petrie and uh, Shotzi back in the majors. You're going to see Bruce Robbins, who is uh, a future everyday starter for Detroit. So there's a lot going on there. Um, I appreciate everyone tuning in. Like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content. content. Um, Let's take a look. Who's the player of the game? I guess we're going to give it to... I guess we have to give it to JT because he did have the go-ahead go home run. So that was his 17th on the year. Russell gets his 10th win. 10 and 17. Cappy gets his 4th save. Underwood did not give up a run, but uh, not a great performance. Bumgarten takes the loss. He is 12 and 11. So that's it here from Tiger Stadium. We'll be back tomorrow with Game 2 of the series. Until then, everyone have a great night.